And I believe this one just came for to validate what Proverbs 4 verse 18 says. For the path of a just man is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto a perfect day. When he prayed and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. There was an encounter. He had an encounter in the place of prayer. God. I say glory to God. Like I said, was it that Jesus wasn't praying before? No. He had had different faces, different experiences. But every time he goes into prayer, there's always something new that comes on board. But this particular one here kind of stood out. He says he prayed. The fashion of his countenance was altered. And the bee part said, and his raiment. That talks about his clothes. The fashion of his countenance. Mind you, there was a kind of a glory that came forth. And this glory did not come from without. No, this glory came from within. It was in the place of prayer that this glory came. Not that it, it was exported somewhere to him. Uh, no, it came from within. That is why the Bible said we all with open face beholding as in a glass. He said we are changed. The place of prayer is a place that brings change. The place of prayer is a place that turns things around. And the fashion of his countenance was altered. That is what the Bible said was altered. Glory to God. There was, there was an unusual experience, you know, that, that had never been seen around him before. I want to believe that is what prayer is all about. Prayer is more than we just talking. Prayer is more than we just, you know, chanting. No. It, it has to do with experience. It has to do with encounter. There must be a, a tangible encounter. And I believe God was someone tonight. On this mountain, you will have your own experience. I said upon this mountain, you will have your own experience. Still looking at it, what we read here, he said, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. The word altered means was tampered with. It was tampered. It was altered. So whether you know it or not, the place of prayer altered things. The place of prayer tampers with him. The place of prayer changes things. And his raiment was white and glistering. So this, this glory that came from within him was so strong that we could see the effect. The effect came forth uh, in, in, you know, around everything about him. The Bible says, and get talked with him two men which we come, I mean Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory. They came in glory. Now, before Jesus went into glory, I mean, went into prayer, we never heard anything about glory. These two men came in glory. But if you read it, the Bible said they came uh, who appeared in glory and spake of his disease. But that is no way I'm showing you in verse 32. He said, But when Peter and they that were with him, he said they were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory. Mind you, before he went into prayer, there was nothing like glory. But after prayer, he came out. Coming out, they could see something. The Bible said they saw his glory. And the two men that stood with him, they saw. So in the place of prayer... We build up strength. We build up grace. In the place of prayer, there is what I call impartation of glory. Releases of glory upon God's people. Praise the Lord. When they woke up, they saw his glory. Now look at what James speaking here. I want to connect James 5 from verse 13 to verse 18. James 5 from verse 13 to verse 18. Let's look at it. James 5. If you dare say amen. James 5 from verse 13. The Bible speaking here is saying, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Now count the, the number of prayer we're going to get in this verse of scripture. The first one there is said, let him pray. That's number one. Is any afflicted? Let him sing psalms. 
Verse 14, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray the second time. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, and the prayer of faith, prayer appeared the third time, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up if he has committed sin and they shall be forgiven him. He went forward in verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray, number four, one for another, that ye may be healed. What kind of prayer? He said, the effectual fervent prayer, number five, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He went further again in verse 17. Elias or Elijah. That is one of those that appeared, you know, with Jesus there and Moses. Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly. Number six time prayers appear in there. Earnestly. That it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Verse 18, last. He said, and he prayed. How many times? How many have we counted now? Praise the Lord. It's more than five. Praise the Lord. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Seven times. Brought forth her fruit. He prayed. First, there was no rain. He prayed so that there wouldn't be rain, and the heaven hearkened to his voice. Please take note. And he prayed again, and what happened? And the Bible said that there was rain. But the question tonight is what is prayer? What is prayer? Now that we've talked about all of these mighty feats that prayer, if prayer, was, I mean, it's, it's not important. I don't think it will have appeared in that verses of scripture almost seven times there what we've just read right now. Talking about prayer, prayer, the prayer of faith. Confess your fault one to another. Pray for one another. So that is to tell you and I that prayer is so important to the believer. And that is why when I started, I told us that prayer is, uh, you know, the instrument or the platform that uh, God gave to the believer. Uh, with this instrument, we can experience or we can express or encounter God in a higher dimension. Can somebody say higher dimension? Say higher dimension. So what is prayer? Prayer is simply intimacy. Prayer is intimacy. I've seen people who said, well, I'm tired, you know, I can't go to church. <laughs> Your weakness is not an excuse to stand in between <laughs> your intimacy with God. So even in the place of weakness, one ought to maintain the place of prayer. In the place of weakness, in the place of tiredness, never you allowed your tiredness to take the place of prayer. No. Prayer means intimacy. That is why if you look at it where we read, uh, you know, in Hebrews 4 verse 16, it said, let us come therefore boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. He said, when we come, he said, we will find help. We will find grace. There is grace available. We will find help. But the thing is that let us come boldly. Let us come with faith to the throne of grace. And when we come in there, one of the instruments that will help us to release grace and the hell is called prayer. And it's more than we just talking. Hallelujah. It is intimacy. It is fellowship. Can somebody say this is intimacy? Prayer is fellowship. Hallelujah. Where you fellowship with your creator. Now, prayer also can be said to be mortality interfacing with divinity prayer is a platform where mortality have access with divinity i said prayer when mortality you know engages divinity what happens here is prayer it is not possible for mortality to engage divinity outside of prayer praise the lord when heaven is being given access or permission to intervene in earth's affairs. If you look at it here in Second Chronicles 7, from verse uh, 12 to 14, there about, he said, if there is pestilence in, in the earth, can we have the scripture, please? Second Chronicles 7, uh, from verse 12 to verse 14. Let's have it, please. He said, 
And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. I have heard what? So what God hears is prayer, not our tears. I have heard, not your complaint. I have heard your prayers. And I have chosen this place for myself. For an a house of sacrifice. Let's go. Next verse. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. Next verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and do what? And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. What will happen? Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. So prayer is when the heaven is being given permission. Now when the earth give heaven's permission to intervene in his affairs. The heavens cannot step into the earth. Hallelujah. Until there is a permission. Glory to God. That is why we hear, say, this is the confidence we have each time we pray according to his will. He heard us. Now he said, if they will pray, hallelujah, and seek my face, what they are doing, they are simply giving me permission. They are simply giving me access. I cannot come into your space without you. That is what the Bible says, for without your mind will I do nothing. God is inviting us, say, let's come. He is almighty God. He can break protocols. He can come in like that. But you see, he is not willing to break his words. That is why it's waiting for us to invite him. Give me an invitation. On his own, before now in Genesis, we are told that God goes into the garden in the cool of the day. He goes on his own without an invitation. But now the table has changed. Now you are the one that will invite him into your fears. And the instrument that you need to do that is called prayer. Can somebody say prayer? If they humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, what will happen? I will hear them and I will heal their life. In other words, I will intervene in their situation. In Luke 18 verse 1, he said, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. The Bible, the word faint there means do not get tired. So even in tiredness and weakness, we have been instructed, admonished to pray. Pray always without ceasing. In Proverbs 24, in verse 10, he said, If you faint in a day of adversity, it is because your strength is little. The strength there, your strength is little. If you faint, if you are tired, it's because your strength is little. So one of the ways you maintain strength is to maintain prayers. Maintain steady prayers. Hallelujah. Because the more you pray, what happens? Things happen around you. Look at me. There are categories of prayers. We have the first one, you pray with your understanding. Hallelujah. You pray with your understanding or you pray with English. Wonderful. And this is the second one, you pray in the Holy Ghost or you pray in tongues. Pray with your understanding. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, can we have it? 1 Corinthians 14 from verse 1. 1 Corinthians 14 from verse 1 to 4 says, 1 Corinthians 14 said, That's not the scripture we're looking for. He that prays in a known tongue. Okay, let's have a stool there. Can we have a stool and see? Okay. Can we go? It said, for he that speaketh in what? An unknown tongue does what? Speaketh not unto men. But how? But unto God. For no man understandeth him. But how be it in the spirit? What happened? He speaketh mysteries. This scripture comes to the second point, second category there, which is speaking in tongues or in the praying in the Holy Ghost. So every time you pray in tongues, what are you doing? You are speaking mysteries. Can we read verse 4? Give me verse 4. Look at verse 4. He that speaketh in what? An unknown. Look at the word unknown. It simply means that you are not aware. That is, with your human senses, you don't know what you are saying. 
It's the Bible call it unknown. It's unknown to you, but it's known to God. He that speaketh an unknown tongue edifieth himself. The word edify means charges himself. When your bars in your phone is low, what do you do? You look for power. You charge the phone, and what happens? It begins to charge. That process is what we call edify. So many a times when it looks as if you are weak, you are tired. One of the instruments that God has given unto us is prayers. And we are breaking it. There is a part where you pray in tongues. And there is a part where you pray with your understanding. He said, he that speaketh in a known tongue, edifieth, charges, builds up himself. But he that prophesied, edifieth the church. Can I make this one clear? This second part of the verse, to prophesy here is simply saying, if I'm standing here right now, and I'm just speaking in tongues, for 30 minutes, and somebody who is coming to the church for the first time, walked in here and is sitting down, he won't understand what I'm saying. Is that not true? He, he can't flow. But when I just said, this week shall be your week. Be blessed in the city. Be blessed outside the city. Your ears will hear good news. What am I doing? I'm simply prophesying. That is why I said, he that prophesied. What happened? I defied the church. So when I prophesy to the church, the church is built up. The church is charged. That is why you simply say, Amen. I receive it. I receive it because they are being edified. Hallelujah. But I'm going somewhere. Look at verse 8. Verse 8, then verse 14 and 15. Verse 8. For if the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Paul speaking here. Let's proceed. Give me verse 14 and verse 15. 14 and 15. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayed. <laughs> but my understanding, can you see the first point I said we have? Praying with your understanding and praying in tongues. Praying with your understanding. This verse of scripture, he said, but my understanding is unfruitful. So when I'm praying in tongues, the only part of me that is enjoying what I'm doing is my spirit man. Shati atolo badia akatala badagadagata. My spirit man is being edified. My spirit man is happy. My spirit man is growing. But when I change over and I say, uh, let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. What happened? My understanding is flowing right now. My understanding, I'm hearing what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. I understand what I'm saying. Give me verse 15. Look at verse 15. He said, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. So it's not just enough pray with the understanding. It is very, very imperative, very, very important to connect the two together. So when you see people who pray with the understanding, understanding here could be in English or could be in your dialect. You are speaking English or you are praying with your dialect. That is something you are saying that you can understand, you can comprehend. Oh God, arise to Today, on my behalf, oh God, fight this battle for me. Oh Lord, make a way for me where the seems to be noble. What am I doing? I'm praying with my understanding, but to get to a point where I will now switch over. Shati katula brada, I say kata yagada. Now I may not even understand what I'm saying, but there's a connection, there is a flow. So Paul is admonishing us: do not just pray with the understanding, connect all together. But give me verse 18. Look at what Paul says in verse 18. Paul says, verse 18 please. He said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than ye all. This is Paul speaking here. So Paul too speaks in tongues. Paul said, I'm not just speaking in tongues. I also pray with my understanding. I thank my God. I speak in tongues more than ye all. So, these are the categories of prayers. Every time you want to go into prayers, what do you do? These are the categories. You pray with your understanding, you pray in tongues. But what are the benefits? What do we enjoy? What do we derive in prayers? You hear some people say, we have been praying, we have been praying. It looks as if nothing is working, but that's not true. One of the first benefits you enjoy or you derive from prayer is that you build up spiritual strength. You build up strength. In Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. Look at it here. It says, Building up yourself in your most holy. But ye belong, building up yourselves 
on your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. So when you pray in the Holy Ghost, what happened? You, there, there, is, there is a build up. You are building up yourself. Something is growing. Are you hearing me? Your life will remain the same thing again. Keep on praying. As you pray, you are building up. Something is being added to what you used to know before now. Strength is coming in the inner man. Receive grace tonight to pray in the Holy Ghost. Receive grace tonight to pray with your understanding. Are you saying amen on this mountain? Second benefit, when we pray, situations are altered. Situations are altered. The word altered means tampered with. They are tampered with. We saw it here in Luke Gospel chapter 9 verse 29. The Bible says, and as he prayed, talking about Jesus, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Was altered. To alter means to tamper with. When you paint a place with white and somebody use black, just one stripe and just bring it on board. That person has altered the color. Is that true? So when you go into prayers, there are things that have been altered. As you're praying in tongues, pray with your understanding. Uh, the sicknesses, they are being altered. Uh, the, the lack and wrong, they are altered. Concern, they are altered. As he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his raiment. So prayer did not only affect his countenance, his personality. But it also affected even what he was wearing. Praise the Lord. The B part that I said the fashion of his countenance was altered. It's simply talking about the material that he wore, what he wore, you know, was somehow glistering. There is, a, you know, a kind of a brightness that came that made everybody, that drew or caught the attention of everyone. Where they have rejected you before, prayer will cause them to just like you. Prayer will cause them to desire to want to reconnect back to you. The fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment, glory to God, raiment glistering white, white glory came around him. Second Corinthians chapter 4, in verse 18, the Bible is speaking, Second Corinthians 4 verse 18. Can we have it? 4 verse 18. Second Corinthians 4 18, it says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but are the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the ones which are not seen are eternal. So when you pray with your understanding. People can see it. They can feel it. They can understand what you are saying. They can hear what you are saying. But when you switch over and you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. That is eternal. They can't comprehend it. If you look at the life of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, we're told, Daniel in Daniel chapter 10, Daniel gave his account, he told us, he said, how he spent 20 days praying until the 21st day that Michael, Archangel Michael was sent from God to intervene. Daniel prayed and the angel said to Daniel, the very day you prayed, God heard you and sent me to bring the reply. But while I was coming, a prince of Persia, a demonic power, came and resisted me. I have been there fighting with that demon for 20 days. Until today, the 21st day, that Archangel Michael, who happens to be the head of the angel, came forth. So a higher angel needed to come to rescue the other lower angel. So there are some delays that we are experiencing. <laughs> he said the day you pray God heard you so every time you pray God hears the delay could be due to one reason or the other the Bible says for we know that all things work together for good so when Daniel prayed he prayed with his, with his understanding he prayed with English probably or prayed with Jews prayed with his language and every time you pray with English with your understanding there are forces in the heavenlies that understands what you are saying there are forces everywhere they hear what you are saying but the only language that you, that, you, that you deny them access is when you pray in tongues. Glory to God. When you pray in tongues. Daniel was not privileged in his days to pray in tongues. But what a joy. We are children born in due season. We have the gift of tongues. We have the grace of speaking in tongues. And so we can speak. In Romans chapter 8, in verse 26. Let's have it. Romans 8, 26. Romans 8, 26. 
He says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. The word infirmities here simply means both physical and mental weaknesses. So please hear me. You may come into church looking tired physically. That is not an excuse to stop you from praying. I've seen people, they walk into church and they are tired somehow. And during the time of prayers, people are praying. And maybe they stood up to pray for some time. The next thing they say, I'm tired. They chose to sit down. Not knowing that that environment where they are is a place of power that changes things. So someone that has an understanding will say, okay, I came weak and tired. So this, this leg, this pain, if I need to fall, let me fall. But I need to pray until this pain is being altered. Are you hearing me? So standing and praying is a sign of faith. That is why James said, a prayer of faith shall save the sick. A prayer of faith. Someone who needed to sit and they brought cheer. They said, sit down. They said, no, let me stand. That person is already exercising faith. In fact, that faith alone, God has seen it. Are you with me tonight here? Glory to God. He said, likewise, the Spirit also helped our weaknesses, mental or physical weaknesses. He said, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Have you noticed sometimes you want to pray, you don't even know what to pray. Talk to me. Do I have a witness here? Sometimes you want to pray, you don't even know which prayer to pray. You don't even know how to start. That's the advantage we believers who are filled with the Holy Ghost, we have against those who are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Because you know you want to pray. You are in charge of some people praying, but you don't even know how to even organize the prayer. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. In other words, praying to your satisfaction. That's the way you pray. And at the end of the day, you know that you are satisfied. That's what the Bible says. And this is the confidence we have. Each time we pray according to his will. What happened? He heard us. But some others don't even know how to start and when to stop. Praise the Lord. We know not what we should pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. Groanings which cannot be explained. When you see somebody praying, what is he doing? He is groaning. He cannot, the Bible says you can't explain it. But the problem is that the devil has entered a lot of persons who are fighting, speaking in tongues. And they tell you, they say that thing they are saying in your church. Do you even understand it? I don't even need to understand. Because 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 to verse 4, made me to understand. He said, what I'm speaking is unknown to me, but it's known to God. Glory to God. And here again, he's also telling us that what I'm doing for the spirit, you know, help it with groaning. So when I'm groaning, it's not just me groaning, uh, but the Holy Ghost is inside groaning. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Shake at ayada, rabada gada gada gada, ragada gada. What are you doing? You are groaning. You are groaning. Touching areas. Next verse. Give me verse 27. Look at 27 there. He said, And he that such at the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. I don't know what is the mind there, but he knows because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So one can pray in his understanding and pray out of the will of God. But you can't pray in tongue if what you are doing is genuine and you go out of the will of God. I thought you heard me tonight. One could pray with his understanding and pray out of the will of God. What do I mean by that? Someone is only, only asking, oh God, bless me. Bless my family. Bless my work. Give me plenty of money. My, myself, my wife, my, my children, just us. Just us. 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 Is that part of the will of God? God said to Abraham, I will bless you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The reason why I want to bless you is so that you will be an extension of my blessing. I'm not blessing you because of your selfish interest. I'm blessing you so that you will become what? An extension of my blessing to the world. Praise the Lord. So you find a lot. Many times when you finish praying, you get to a point with your understanding. You switch over in tongues. Praise the Lord. So as not to miss. In case I miss some things when I'm praying with my understanding. But at least let me switch over in tongues. Because the tongues will help me flow down through the wheel. He said, uh, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. 
Jesus Christ had an opportunity to choose whether to die or not. But on the Garden of Gethsemane, while he was praying, the Bible said, and as he prayed, what happened? His sweat was dropping like blood. I mean, that's a dimension of prayers. Do you know that Jesus also speak in tongues? You notice that in the grave of Lazarus, the Bible says, and he groaned in the spirit. <laughs> to groan in the spirit means to speak in tongues. When he said, where have you kept him? They say, come see. And the Bible says, and he, Jesus, groaned in the spirit. Every time you groan, what are you doing? You are speaking in tongues. You are praying a prayer of the spirit. You've gone out of your understanding. He groaned in tongues. Grace comes upon someone tonight here to groan in the spirit. He said, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit Lord shall lift up a standard. Samson was faced before a lion. And the Bible said, when that lion roared at Samson, the Bible said, and the spirit of God you know, was steered in Samson. The spirit of God steered. That is one of the things that the Spirit of God does in us when we are praying in the Holy Ghost. It helps boldness to come out of us. The Bible said the righteous, they are as bold as a lion. There's a dimension you get to that fear will leave you. There's a dimension you get to that weakness will leave you. There's a dimension you get to that failure will leave you. Yes, it may look as if you fail physically, but you just know inward. Because like I told you, something came when Jesus prayed. His, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And that glory that came did not come from without. The glory came from within, from the place of prayer. He was able to bat something new. Now receive grace to bat something new every time you go to the place of prayer you bat something a new glory people begin to see a new glory a new dimension of god's hands upon your life they will begin to see it in the name of jesus i thought i have a witness here glory to god now as i close tonight hear this prayer is not a necessity i mean prayer is not an option please prayer is not an option Prayer is a necessity. Prayer is a must. Prayer, uh, you, you, you need it. Now hear me. Not that you wanted prayer, but you need prayer. You need it. It's not an option. That is what the Bible says, when he pray. It didn't say if you pray. When? It means, it's, it's a man ought always to pray and not to faint. If you faint, when you stop praying, then what, what happens? He says, because your strength is little. It's not an option. It's a necessity. Don't wait until there are problems before you begin to pray. Live a life of prayer. Wherever you are, you can engage in praying. You can pray. Pray your way through. Pray your way out of trouble. Pray your way out of every concern. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth all her children. The place of prayer is a place where we bring forth. It's a place where we bat our miracle. Though it looks as if it's not coming, but wait for it. It will surely come. Keep on pressing. Keep on pushing. Before you know what is happening, that that is to come will surely come. I see your heart desires manifesting to you. I see your heart desires coming your way. Tonight, I pray for the spirit of prayer. I pray for the spirit of supplication. The grace to pray. The hunger to pray. Rest upon you right now. I say rest upon you right now. Let it rest upon someone right now. There are people who only look for miracles once they get it all off they go. No. Live a life of prayer. Wherever you are, you can create time and pray. Create time and pray. Create time and pray. It is better praying than not even praying. It may not be too long that you are starting, but it's better that at least it's in your mind to pray. The children of Israel were in captivity. But that didn't stop them. Say, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat and there we were. When we remember Zion, hallelujah. So right there in captivity, they still remember what was happening in Zion. They had to create another Zion there. So wherever you are, you can create Zion. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. So it's a place of possessing. It's a place where we take back what belongs to us. It's a place of strength. As we go into prayer, strength is being infused into us. They go from 
strength to strength. Every one of them that appeared before God in Zion. So every appearance before God is an opportunity to be strengthened. Tonight, because you came, you are hereby strengthened by faith. In your health, be strengthened. In your home, be strengthened. In the works of your hand, be strengthened. In your finances, be strengthened. In the mighty name of Jesus. So things have been altered. Things are altered. And when you pray, he says, Say, our Father, who art in heaven. So the earth has problem, but the earth is looking for an intervention. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We hallow you. Thy kingdom come. Thy will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is in heaven? There is, there is peace in heaven. So, Lord, we, we are giving you permission. Step into our zone. Step into our space. And as we are coming, we know that what you are enjoying dear will rob on us. Come with peace. We are in need of peace. We are in need of joy. The Bible says for the, the, the street of heaven, they are paved with gold. So if you have gold in heaven, the street of heaven, Lord, we need an experience here. We curse poverty. We curse lack and wonder. All that you are enjoying, Lord, we need it. And that is why we are hallowing you. So the place of prayer is not just we making some religious chant. No, there should be an expression an experience, an encounter of a higher dimension of who God is. We need it here in our midst so that it will make prayer to look more colorful and more beautiful. Let's come out of the place of religion. Let's begin to do something new and something real. Let's begin to flow as we have been led. In Romans chapter 18 verse 14, the Bible says as many that are led by the Spirit of God, he said they are the sons of God. Tonight there's going to be a leading here. Let's rise on our feet in a moment right now, everyone. Uh, give us opportunities. Uh, you're going to pray with your understanding. Uh, and you're going to pray in tongues. Uh, can we lift up our voice to heaven right now? Everyone, can you go ahead uh, and pray with your understanding in a moment? Uh, and say, Lord, I thank you for grace that you have made available in my life. Uh, I thank you for the joy. Uh, I thank you for the privilege uh, of knowing you. Uh, of being called your son. Uh, of being called your child. Uh, I celebrate you, Lord. Uh, I was young. Uh, I've never seen the righteous for and so on this mountain uh, I'll not be forsaken uh, the young lion do hunger and so on uh, the day that seek the Lord uh, shall not lack any good thing uh, as I've come to seek you on this mountain uh, I won't lack anything uh, I will lack joy I will lack peace uh, I will lack money uh, I will lack friends uh, I will lack relationship uh, are you praying right now Sharia talo let weakness leave my body uh, let pain leave me now. Let every concern be uprooted. Alter everything that needs to be altered. I thought someone is going to pray more than what you are doing. Cry out right now. Come and lose your sin. Let there be an expression, a demonstration. And Come and pray, pray, and you're going to feel it. Pray and see. There's an assurance, an assurance of peace that is coming to your heart. There's an assurance of joy that is coming to you right now. Come on, can you groan in the spirit right now? Can we go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost? Groan in the spirit. Everyone right now, come on, something new. Allow something new to flow out of you. For out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Can you allow something new to flow out of you? Something new, a new experience. Labor 
Come and pray it out. Pray it out. Pray it out. You don't need to know or to understand what you are saying. Hey, Kata, that is why it's been called a known tongue. It's unknown to me, but my father knows it. God understands it. Ida, a Sharia da, a Lema da, Ragata Gata Gata Gata, a Ragata Yagata, a Reba, Maraba, Ragata Yagata, a Zagate, a Kate, a Ragata, a Rete. Someone is saying, a love is a love, a love of that waiting, a love of that delay, a love of denial, a love of that setback. Gata, a Zagata Yagate, Lake at Neyagado, a Ragata Gata Gata, Rabata Yagata Yagate, a Katono Bania. Let the table be turned around. Let it be turned around. Ashiata, Rabada Yagatea, Eketea, Ada, Asetea, Atakuka Kata, Rabada Yagata, Ragata, for the jaws shall leave. Bashada, Asha, Bashada, denied. I pray a prayer of Seda. Believe in you, Ashetea, Aragata Yada, Rabada, for a change of status, a change of story. Apara, on this mountain, on this mountain, on this mountain. Let it be, Esha. We all with open face beholding uh, and the glass. Uh, we are changed, uh, Esha. Ta, Rabana Gata, Ra, the glory of God. We are changed, uh, we are changed. Ashetea, Ataya Gata Rabada, Adeya Gata, Ekatolo Bada, Ragadaya Gataya Gata, Rabada Yagata Yada. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now hear me, what you have just done right now, you've just released fire into the camp of the enemy. I mean, just release fire into the camp of the enemy. What you have just done right now, there are some things that have been altered in your life. I check it out, that weakness is no more there. Check it out, that sickness is no more there. That pain is gone. I mean, that concern is gone. The heaviness in your heart is gone. Check it, sense it. Look at your system. It's no more there again. God is not the man that he should lie. Let God alone be true. And every man, let every man remain. Let doctors report. Remain as liar in the mighty name of Jesus. But I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? There is nothing, including your situation right now. Watch it out. You've succeeded in touching areas. You've touched areas. Mind you, what your prayers in English will take you will take you six months. You can pray it in tongues within three days. You can touch some areas. Ashaka tiada, laki kakuka kabagata ya, aleka tiada, rabada gada 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 gada, agada gado, rabado sashaka, baba 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 baba, kakuka kagata ya gate, leba gata ya gate, ikanu kata, aleba do sienta, kache kate pe 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 ya, eh katuta ta 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 ta. You are touching areas. You may not understand it, but he that understand is there watching you and pressing the button. Listen the angels to bring your heart desires. He said, take it to him right now. Open that door for him. Let that gate be opened. Ah, and the church prayed. And what happened? There was an intervention. Tonight, there is an intervention for someone here. I said, heaven has just intervened in your situation. Heaven has just intervened in your situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up those two hands above your head. And just worship the king of glory. Celebrate him. Whatever the Lord doeth shall be forever. Uh, this favor that has come shall be forever. The doors that have been opened shall be forever. Uh, I mean, the breakthrough that has come shall be forever. The good news shall be forever. That relationship shall be forever. Uh, every increase, uh, the promotion, uh, the breakthrough shall be forever. Can you take it right now by faith? Take it right now by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Father, thank you for what you have done right now. We can sense it. We know it like we know our name. That there is a shift in the realm of the spirit. We can sense it right now that issues and areas have just been altered. To the glory of your name. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. You're watching, wherever you're watching around the world, this evening you've not met with Jesus. What a joy. It's an opportunity for you to know him in order to start having fellowship and intimacy with him. I'd like you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. Wash me. Cleanse me with your blood to serve the living God. Take my name out of the book of death 
and write my names in the book of life. From today, I renounce Satan and all of his empty promises to serve the living God. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, thank you for the life of these precious ones. We break the whole of sin, sickness, and disease in your life. We welcome you all into the families of believers. From today, whatever you lay your hands upon to do, you shall excel. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. You are now a child of God. Look for a Bible-believing church close to you and identify yourself with them. Glory to God. In a moment, we want to partake of the communion. Hallelujah. Can we stretch forth our hands this way? Praise the Lord. One of the promises given unto us that when we eat his flesh and drink his blood, he said we are simply taking the partaking of his life, his very life. The carnal man cannot understand this. I'd like us to stretch forth our hands this way tonight, everybody. Stretch forth your hands tonight. In case you're watching anywhere, you have, uh, you have biscuit, you have anything there, you can use it as a point of contact. You can use it also. Can we just stretch forth our hands and begin to consecrate uh, what is before us tonight here? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This ceases to be, you know, wafers or biscuit, but now consecrated into the body of Christ. It ceases to be, you know, current. It's now the precious blood of Jesus. As we partake of it, we partake of life. Life flows through our vein in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. And amen. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Before we partake of the communion, let's get our offerings so that once you cast your offering, you just walk down to partake of the communion. Let's get our offerings out tonight, everybody. God's word speaking, it says, give and it shall be given back to you, good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, so shall men give back to your bosom. It's offering time. I say it's offering time. Let's package our offerings, whatever you brought before the Lord tonight. Can we go ahead and just speak a word, Father, thank you. Out of the abundance you give to us, we've come to say thank you. We rebuke every form of lack and want in our life, in our home. Accept this from us tonight, Lord, and you take all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray, and amen. Let's cast a seat. Once you are done, you partake.